If you calibrate electrical instrumentation, you probably know that Fluke MetCal Plus software can help you automate calibration, improve throughput, and manage test and measurement assets. But if you calibrate mechanical or dimensional instruments, there hasn't been a good solution for you until now. Hi, I'm Bill Spath. I run the technical support and training group out of Fluke Calibration. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Fluke Manual MetCal. We're going to show you how to create a data sheet, we're going to show you how to store the data, and then we're going to show you how to actually report on that data that we're going to collect. We're going to go over to the software, being Fluke Manual MetCal. We're going to launch it. We're going to go ahead and log in. Click on the designer to design a data sheet. We're going to fill in the test description. We're going to fill in the test type, the test value, the units, what the low limit is, what the high limit is, resolution, TUR, and uncertainty. We're going to click on check. Then we're going to save that. After we save it, we're going to type in which manufacturer it's for, which model it's for. Then we're going to go ahead and actually save the data sheet. We're ready to calibrate. The data sheet's created. No pencil, no paper, no extra forms, no spreadsheets. We're ready to go. Now that we have a calibration data sheet, We've created and saved it. Now we actually get to go use and actually calibrate an asset or multiple assets. So the first thing we're going to do, go over to the software. We're going to log in. After we log in, click on the calibrate button and we're going to select which assets or which items we wish to calibrate. In this case, I actually have two, but I can have 20. It doesn't really matter. It's how many I want to calibrate. So I look at the first one and I enter in the asset number. Look at the second one. And again, enter in the asset number. Which data sheet do I want to use? Well, you want to use the one I just created. Which standard do I want to use? Well, I want to use the standard here that I have in front of me. So everything pulls it up. There's all the data and everything. And I want to click on Calibrate then. In this case, you'll notice that I'm actually calibrating two assets. Like I said, it could be 20 assets. But I'm going to calibrate the first asset and the second asset. Each point is going across. The data sheet's already here. So I would actually go ahead and grab my unit, zero it, and perform the calibration just like you do manually. No big deal. All right, I got my measurement there. I'm just going to remember that for the moment. And I'm going to actually type in that first measurement. It allows me to go ahead and grab the second unit and actually measure it also while I'm at it. All right, measure it and I type its reading in. First test point I've completed. It's lunchtime now though, so I'm going to leave everything here as it is with one exception. I'm going to go over here to the software, click on the button that says hibernate, and it's going to save the partial calibration. It's going to save the calibration event that I've done up to this point. So I say that, and it says hibernate. I want to hibernate. Still ask me for the details of the temperature and stuff. I save that. Now it's hibernated in that mode. It's already been saved to the database, being the Fluke MetBase database, and we're good to go there. When I would come back from lunch, go ahead to the calibrate. There are two calibrations in hibernation, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to select one of those devices, and it's going to allow me to type in the values for those. Then I'm going to go ahead and actually measure on the second block, because I'm going to do this on multiple test points. So I go to the second test point, do the same process, and I type its number in. This case, though, you'll notice it's in red. Why is it in red? Well, it failed for that particular point. I could repeat that point, but in this particular case, it's actually out. I need to perform an adjustment on this and actually take as left data then. So I would go do the adjustment, then I would do the as left data. The adjustment, I do it offline but the actual as left data, I'd click on this field here and actually it would show me the multiple as left data for it. So in this case, I corrected it and I actually took the as left data. I can then save, enter in the temperature, and 
and then it's saved. I actually saved it to the Fluke MetBase database, the same one that MetCal uses routinely. So it goes in the same storage location, same data, same tables, you can use the same reports against it. So there's no issues whatsoever with it. We've actually completed the calibration at this point. We created a data sheet to start with, then we ran the calibration, and now we've actually want to generate a report. So we're going to actually show you at this point how to do that report with the Fluke Manual MetCal. So we're going to turn to the computer at this point. We can just click on the reports, choose the report of interest that we want. We can either do a print or we can do a print preview. I'm going to do a print preview in this case. And you see the calibration report come up on the screen. The second way of printing reports after we're done with them and they're already stored to the database, select your report of interest. Enter in your asset number. You can select the most recent calibration or other dates. And then you can just say OK. And there you have it. We showed you Fluke Manual MetCal, how to generate reports. We created data sheets earlier, and we actually ran a calibration earlier. In this case, we've actually shown you on the screen how to do a print preview or a print of report of calibration. You could also do stickers or labels if you'd like. From Fluke Calibration, this is Bill Spath. Thank you for watching.